How's your blood sugar levels? Are you pre-diabetic or even diabetic? And would you even know? Because I didn't know until about five years ago, I got a letter saying, oh, we did a blood test and guess what? You're pre-diabetic. I want to tell you about a bit of tech that I've been using for the last week or so, a continuous glucose monitor, which basically sticks on the back of my arm and connects to my phone. I'm showing you this because I'm not sponsored. I just think it could be really useful because it's been an incredible insight for me. I need to explain this table so that we know what we're talking about. Now, it all concerns the level of glucose in the blood because high glucose levels are what give rise to diabetes and all the problems that come with that, which can be very, very serious. This column is percentage of glucose in the blood and that's used quite universally around the world. Around here though, for the instantaneous level of glucose, if I did a finger prick test, let's say, which I don't need to do, but if I did, we'd measure that in MMOL here, but somewhere else in other places, it might be measured in milligrams per deciliter. And this right hand column is not actually used for the instantaneous test of blood sugar level. It's used for a kind of long term average. So you might have that test every three months or so. And it's often that that's used to indicate whether somebody is pre-diabetic or has diabetes. And that's in the jargon, that's called the HbA1c test, which is MMOL per mole. Now they all broadly relate to each other. So in other words, it's just a mathematical conversion. But on this one, the relationship can be slightly fuzzy against these because it depends a bit on the uh, biochemistry of the person. So if we're talking percentage at about 5.65%, I think universally around the world, they would say that you were pre-diabetic. And then if we're getting up here, you know, edging up to seven, they would say that you were technically speaking diabetic. So you can see I've marked on this pre-diabetic range. Now, when I was first alerted five years ago, I think I was 44 on this scale. So I was about there somewhere. And the last test I had was 47. So I was kind of just on the shoulder of being officially diabetic. Well, that was darned annoying because I'd already done some things to try and help myself. If you get into this red zone here, it's not immediately dangerous. I'm not a medical person, but I figured this out. And this chart from a UK diabetes charity shows, here we go, 7%, 8%, and you see the colors increasing towards red. And some of this relates to long-term and some of it relates to kind of in the moment. So if you were up here in the moment, you know, nasty things might happen to you here and now. But if you were sort of chugging along at this sort of level in general, then I imagine that your health would just degrade over a longer period of time. Now I don't take sugar. I get a fair bit of exercise. I'm not overweight. I'd taken a number of steps to eat better and it made no difference at all. Hence, in desperation, I bought this tool. If I show you my graph, that's where I am just at this moment. That's for, for today and I'm in the good zone. The thing that was pushing my sugar levels way up were breakfast cereals because I would have a big bowl of cereals to start the day and I do mean big almost like a bucket okay and I'd moved away from cornflakes and things like that to bran flakes because I thought there would be more fiber and yada 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 but at the end of the day I would also have another big bowl of cereals because I'm always a bit hungry before I go to bed and with this tool I could see immediately that that was spiking my sugar levels to about 9 or 10 mmol per litre. Far, far too high. So all the good work that I've been doing has been completely negated by eating the wrong stuff mornings and evenings. The other things that are high triggers, of course, are potatoes and white bread and things like that. Now I think, from this experience recently, I could probably move from pre-diabetic to non-diabetic normal just by quitting those cereals that I have on a morning and an evening. Well, I've started to look at what they call glycemic index, but it's 
how much sugar foods release and how quickly they release them. Now I quite like nuts and fruit and, and the right fruit and I can eat another bucket full of fruit and nuts and it, and it doesn't raise my index very much. I don't want to say too much about the kind of food side of it because this is more about the tech than the food but there has to be a context for what I'm saying. Now in addition to getting all sorts of charts on your phone you can also log on online with a web browser and you get a oh, vast amount of data which will allow you to manage and control your sugar levels. Now I've come to the view that I'm not inherently trending to diabetes. I'm just eating, you know, eating the wrong stuff. I mean, if I was a builder's laborer and I was working hard every day, you know, with the muscle pounding activity, I wouldn't have a problem at all. But because most of us these days, you know, are couch potatoes or we work at home perhaps, or, you know, we eat at the wrong times or whatever, or we're getting older. So a tool like this, it, it just gave me an incredible insight. So I'm telling you because, you know, you might be benefit from it too. We bought one of these things for my wife as well because with no experience I had no idea if the variations in my chart were normal or whether they were you know signaling diabetes and it was good to see that her chart had the same sort of variations. so if we ate the same thing at the same time um, we could look at the differences in sugar peak and broadly our charts were the same sort of shape however we are triggered by slightly different things so we had fish and chips last night and her chart kind of went off the scale more than mine but something that I struggle with if I drink a cup of tea, no sugar, I get a big sugar spike. It makes no sense. All the reading I've done said that shouldn't happen, but I can tell you from, you know, trying it several times, I get a big sugar spike if I drink a cup of unsweetened tea, just milk. But luckily, really pleased, lattes don't trigger my sugar. So that's really reassuring. Here's just a selection of charts that I printed off from the web view. So that's the kind of headline chart for the last week that I've had. Now, if I just say that my average glucose is 5.3 mmol per litre, and it's indicating a long-term average of 38 A1C, the point is that that's below the pre-diabetic range. And I think I can do better than that. This is quite a nice chart. So you can see the 50% average and then the excursions from that. But across the top here, I've got the average over the last seven days for time periods. So midnight to two o'clock in the morning, 4.8, 4.4, 4.5, which is low as you can imagine because I'm asleep and not eating. But my highest period here is only 5.8. Well, that's well below the pre-diabetic range. I can also see by day. 5.8, 6, this is when I was eating those cereals, 5.9, but by yesterday, 5, 4.9, 5. You know, I'm really in the good zone there. And that's just by changing a few things in my diet. That's a statistical chart. So the six, it's a 16 page report. So this chart shows the trace for each individual day. So you can see this great big step up here when I was eating those cereals and that was just the morning. Imagine another one like that at night and I quickly figured out that I needed to quit those. Now getting over 10, which is only a guide, it's just bringing up your averages which are going to leave, lead you to long-term problems. That's what it means. So a reading of 10 here on the chart that I just showed you is 8% blood sugar level, glucose level. I did a bit of research before I settled on this. It seems to be quite common and recommended. It calls itself a Freestyle Libra 2 Plus. I think at 56 pounds UK or 68 euros or 71 US dollars, it's pretty cheap for a 15 day in-depth study with all that data. I just wanted to share that bit of tech with you because it's been so useful to me. I'll get another blood test maybe in three or four months time. It'll be a year before my GP calls me again, so I may get one of the tests by post. 
Now it might be worth you having a test. You may think you're fine and be surprised. Anyway, thanks for watching.